Billy Newman would have been 30 years old when war was declared in 1914. It was against this background, times of great tragedy and disaster, that he grew up. Born in the year 1884, during the reign of Queen Victoria, when Gladstone was Prime Minister, he was the product of the first of the board schools. He left school and started work at the age of 13, the year 1897. Billy was blessed with a rich voice and a good memory, and whilst at school he learnt to read well. His ability to read was noted by a sympathetic teacher, who would pick him out and encourage him to read in front of the whole class. She taught him how to project his voice and give expression to the words he was reading, and he acquired a love of language. This Billy always remembered with much pride, and he felt that it stood him in good stead later in life, and he often talked of the kindness of that teacher. Billy was the youngest in a family of four brothers and one sister. The firstborn, William, died in early childhood. Jim was the eldest, followed by Dick, Jake and his sister Anne. All three brothers worked down the pit, and when he left school, Billy, then aged 13, was found a job in a small colliery at Tong, near Bradford, where a couple of dozen or so men were employed below ground. It was a very primitive mine, where colliers were lowered down in a large tub, or would climb down on ladders built against the side of the shaft. Most of the workmen lived near each other. They knew each other as neighbours and friends. Billy had not long been working at this pit before he came face to face with a scene that was to affect him for the rest of his life. It was imprinted deep in his memory. It was a look on the face of the twisted body of a dead man. A rockfall had hit the man whom Billy had been working with only moments before. No time to scream, no time to think, just run and call for help. Here he was, a young, fresh-faced boy of 13, in his first job, working in a pit, in the dark below ground. He was working, fetching and carrying for this man, an old and experienced collier. This man who had been alive moments ago, wielding his pick with such skill and strength, was now dead. He, attacking a man of few words, would now speak no more. All had happened with an unexpected suddenness. The big man who had been talking was now strangely silent. No cry of pain, no whisper of life, just a strange dark silence with a voice of its own. And the message was, crawl out quickly, quickly, hurry, hurry and find help now. Everything gave way to an instinctive emotional urge to move fast, regardless of any difficulty. Scraped knees and torn flesh went unnoticed in the heat of the moment. Nothing mattered except the search for help. Those eyes, that face, he still remembered to this day. Hot, wet, sticky, imprinted on his mind. And then the men, blackened, bare-chested, hot, sweat rags, carrying the crumpled body to the pit shaft bottom before returning through the darkness to the work so vital to their living. The depth of their feeling was kept hidden, but the loss of one of their comrades, their friend, was a loss of great magnitude. No tears, but deeply felt, wounded, part of themselves, was missing. And so, once more along the tunnels into the darkness of the earth, muscles flexed, breaking rock, hewing the black coal necessary to sell, necessary to provide food for the table and pay for shelter, a place to live and provide for the family. But what of the family, the widow and the three young children? We all lived and played together. They were our friends, we were like a family, and this was how we lived. This was the year 1897. Shortly after this terrible tragedy, 
His brother Dick, who was then 18 years old, found Billy a job at her bigger pit at Alton, Maine, where they could work together. But Billy still carried the bitter, sad memories of Tong with him.